Hey there everybody, this is Andrea Moranville from Sweet Life of a Baker. My goal this week was to go through my dry pantry um, and see what I have going into the fall and what I need to make sure that I can do all of our hearty home cooked comfort fall foods that we like to make in our house. And the last thing I want to do is get caught in September without having anything and then go out and have to buy um, all of the things that we like to have in the fall and that's the last thing I want to do financially so what I like to do is start organizing in August and then every time I go to the grocery store pick up a couple things and then by the time the fall comes I know what I have and I can go right ahead and start doing all of the yummy foods that we like to have in the fall baked apples, soups, stews, roasts, um, all of the delicious yummy foods that we make so I just want to show you since I'm here and I was doing it what my pantry looks like this for example you know everybody has like a hub in their kitchen where they get their that's their go-to for what they grab this is mine so right now I don't know if you can see it very well it's kind of messy but this is mine and I have other storage in other parts of the house but this is my go-to so for example um, my quinoa okay I like to keep everything in glass jars so I can see what I have I have more in storage and I will what I've done today is I filled up my jar so I know how much I have left in storage. So every now and then what I'll do is I will go through my pantry, fill up everything that I use, and then see how low I'm running on things. So I still have plenty of this in storage in addition to this. This will be my go-to every day when we're using it, but I have others back in the back room in our storage room. So this is just one example of to show you what exactly it is that I'm doing. So for example, our almonds, okay, this is our go-to. We go through quite a bit of almonds. I put them in my granola, um, we eat them as snacks, we just eat them on just about everything. So this is, this is a good example of what I'm gonna do. So this was my bag of almonds, and I've just filled up my container, and I only have a few left. So I know that this is gonna be something that I'm gonna need really soon. So I put it on my list, and the next time I go to the store, I'll grab a bag, um, or the, Second trip, I'll grab a bag. It's not an urgency. I mean, I still have quite a bit left, but I know we're going to go through this in the next month or so, and I'm going to want to make sure that I'm not caught without it, because the last thing you want to do is be caught without, and then you tend to grab things that aren't quite as healthy. So I know that almonds are one of my choices that I need to have. Almonds are great. I mean, you can use them in just about everything. Um, in here, I also have quite a few different types of seeds. I have flax seed, chai seed, and uh, sesame seeds. And we use these quite a bit as well also. I put chai in my oatmeal, baked oatmeals. I put chai in my yogurt. Um, I put chai seeds in just about everything. Um, sometimes I'll put it in my granola. So I have about half of a jar left on this. This is gonna last a while. I mean, you don't really use more than half a tablespoon um, for quite a bit. Like an entire jar of overnight oats, I'll use one tablespoon. So I don't, even though this jar is all I have left, I don't feel a need to run out to the store and buy more. So this isn't even on my list because I know this is going to last for a while. Um, Flaxseed, same thing. You're going to use such a small amount at any given time that you really don't need, um, I don't need to go out and buy this. I still have quite a bit left. Peanuts, on the other hand, I'm almost out. So this is on my list. So I know that I have no more in my back room and this is all I have left. So I know that I need to buy peanuts. So this is on here. And I still have some pumpkin seeds that we I put in my granola in the fall left from last year. They don't go bad. They're just, you know, they're in a sealed container. But this is all I have left. So even though this isn't an urgency, I know probably by October I'm gonna want to buy, have this on my list for another bag, for another purchase. So I just wanted to show you a few things that I have in my pantry. Same thing with popcorn. I like to buy organic popcorn. This is all I have left. So you know, you can put this in a sauce pot on the stove with a little bit of coconut oil or olive oil or even butter or any type of oil, but I like to use coconut oil. Um, and you put a lid on and you can make your own popcorn. You don't need to buy microwavable popcorn. And this is organic, so I like this one. Um, I have one jar of applesauce left from last year. So I, even though this is kind of a snack, I keep this in here because you can flavor things with applesauce. You can substitute things with applesauce. I can substitute things in my baking for applesauce. So I keep this up here. Same thing with chocolate chips. Now, I have an entire other cabinet for all of my baking supplies, but I keep chocolate chips in this pantry because I use it for so much more. I put it in granola sometimes, I put it in our pancakes, so I want it as a quick reach. I like to use, or I, I do use, a dairy-free and soy-free chocolate chip because my son has dairy allergies, so I want to make sure that whatever I use for chocolate chips is also going to be good for him. So I keep this up here even though I bake with it, I also cook with it and put it in a bunch of other stuff. So that's that. These are the types of things that I keep in my pantry on a daily basis. 
Yesterday, or the other day, I made a large bag of granola. All right, so now this is good to go. This will last a while too. Um, oats are another really big one. So I buy oats in bulk, and then I keep them in my back storage. And then um, that's one that I don't keep up in here. I probably should, but I go through so much of it that I just keep it in the big bag. Um, but oats are a really great staple also for the fall. And you can do so much with oats. Oatmeal raisin cookies, oatmeal bake, um, baked oatmeal in the morning. There's just so much you can do with oats. Some, even last night with our meatloaf we had for dinner. Instead of using a breadcrumb in our meatloaf as a binder, I took some oats, I ground them into a flour in my little magic bullet, and I used that as the binder. So oats has such a multi-purpose, and oat flour it can be substituted in for regular flour or... Um, or um, um, in any type of, a, of food, really. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't have the gluten content, so you don't get the same consistency for, say, making bread. But you can work in a lot of, say, a lot of quick bake breads, like a lot of muffins and things along those sorts. On my top shelf, I keep things along the lines like dates, which I do a lot of baking with dates. Um, when you soften them up, they can turn into a paste, and I use them for my date bars. Um, I have coconut that I use for my granola. And um, coconut cream. I use a lot of coconut, keep a lot of coconut stuff in my house because my son has a dairy allergy. So even like this can of coconut cream, if you cool this down and get it nice and cold, it kind of gets solidifies. And so what I do sometimes when we have desserts coming or we have people coming over, I cool it down, you put it in your KitchenAid mixer with a little bit of sweetener, a little bit of sugar or some sort of a sweetener, and you can make a coconut whipped cream. So when everybody else is having whipped cream, my son also gets to have whipped cream, which is great. Um, a couple other things. Bay leaves are something I keep in my pantry. Bay leaves are great in, for, for all baking. It gives a really great flavor. No, it, it gives a flavor to it. Sometimes people are like, well, why do you use a bay leaf? You don't eat it because you take it out as soon as you're done. But it does add, add a, a depth of flavor to um, stews and soups and things along those sorts. Um, um, if you want to have a brine or a braid, a water bit bath for like a poaching of fish, this gives a nice flavor too with some peppercorns. So I have quite a bit of these left. I won't need to buy these for the fall. A couple things that I do have on my list. I'm almost out of nutmeg and I am out of sage, uh, powdered sage. I have fresh sage, but I like to use the powder also. And I'm also out of thyme. Those are three really good flavors for the fall that I use a lot in my soups and my stews and my chickens as a flavoring, because it has a really nice, hearty, home, fall scent to it. So as you can see, I have quite a few things in here. I like to buy my, oh, another thing, I like to buy my garlic powder in bulk, because it's cheaper that way, and then I, I pour it out, I don't keep this in here, but I keep this in the back room. Then I keep it in my little ramekin here, um, so I don't need to buy this again for a long time. See, I've got quite a bit left. Um, I think that's it, I know I'm rambling, but I just want to show you a few things that I keep in my pantry. Dried fruits. I keep dried fruits in here. We put these in our granola, we put these in our yogurts, I bake with them. So these are also really great also. Um, this, like these things, I'll put these craisins, I'll put them in like a biscotti or I'll put them on um, in my overnight oatmeal. So these are all things that you can keep on a di on, in your pantry that are really, really good for you. Um, cans of chicks peas. I always keep a can of chickpeas in here because if you want to make your own, you could put it on a salad, certainly just rinse and drain them. You can put them on a salad, you can puree them up and turn them into your own homemade hummus, which is so easy to make and really, really yummy. So I keep this in here. Um, let me just see what else I have. Walnuts, I have that on my list. I don't have any walnuts. So I know walnuts are a really good fall flavor, and I like to bake with them in the I bake with them and cook with them, banana nut breads, um, um, you know, baked apples with walnuts in the core, those candied walnuts, those are some really good um, fall flavors. Pumpkin puree, I know I'm out of that. So I know I'm going to want to bake with pumpkin, so I'm going to go out and I have that on my list. Beef stock, same thing. I always keep chicken stock in my pantry. Um, I don't use the bouillon cubes because there's a lot of sodium and a lot of other stuff in it. So this is just organic uh, chicken stock that I keep in my pantry. I have a whole case of it. And I just keep one up here so that I always have it as a quick go-to. But I know I have enough in the back, so I don't need to buy that. Now beef stock, on the other hand, I'm out of that, so I will need to get some beef stock and keep that in my pantry for when I make pot roast in the crock pot, when I make a stew. As you can see, you're hearing a theme here. I do a lot of hearty, hearty foods. If I made a shepherd's pie with leftovers, I want to have a nice base of a beef stock, so I need to grab some of that. And 
vinegar. So I make my own vinegar spray as my everyday cleaner. So I do a good wipe down with other stuff, but my day-to-day go-to is just a dollar store um, bottle. I fill it up about a third of the way with white distilled vinegar and the rest of the way with water, and this is my cleaner. Um, I also have a sage vinegar with water that I use. I made a while back, last year, and I've had it in here all year, a fresh sage, and I filled it up with vinegar, and um, every now and then I refill it up when I pour it out, and I put a little bit of this sage vinegar into here. Same thing, not as much, I don't even use that much, I use maybe that much. Fill it up with the rest of the way with water. I top this back up with vinegar and I put it back in my pantry for the next one. And it just kind of, it, it, sage has a very good antimicrobial back basis, I don't know what the word is, um, to it. So from what I've read, I mean obviously I'm not a scientist, I don't know or, or you know. But um, so I like to do this and I think it works and I think it's great. And it's clean and I know what's in it. So that's that. This is everything I have in my pantry. Um, Olive oil, same thing. I keep my olive oil tin up here. I have a large stock of it down below. I'll fill this up. Now I know that I have about half a thing left of olive oil. I buy an, a bulk organic olive oil. We use so much olive oil in our house because we don't use butter. So not so much, but like when we cook, we use olive oil. And butter is not um, really in it because my son has the dairy allergy. So I like to buy a good organic quality olive oil in bulk. And then I just refill up my go-to section and I know that I need some. Same thing with honey. Now that I'm doing it, I've got the same thing with honey. So I bake a lot with honey and I flavor a lot with honey for sweeteners. And I'm about half out, so I know that actually I need to put this on my list because that's going to be a good one for the fall because that's going to be a good flavoring. So I hope you took something out of this. I know I'm kind of rambling, but if there's anything in here that you see or have any questions about, just let me know. But, you know, is my pantry, you know, the most beautiful pantry you've ever seen in your life? Probably not. But it's functional and it has a good variety. And just, for, just to make it clear, I did not buy all of this at one shot because that would just break our budget. So every time you go to the grocery store, buy a few more. And then you can get into a cycle of what you're running low on and what you need more. And once the cycle continues, you're not breaking the bank to eat healthy. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this. My name is Andrea Moranville from Sweet Life of a Baker. You can follow me on my blog, www.sweetlifeofabaker.blogspot.com, or on Instagram, at Sweet Life of a Baker, or on my Facebook page, Andrea Moranville, Sweet Life of a Baker. All right, I hope you've enjoyed this, and have a great day. Bye.